for a czar to rise in Russia, a dictator who begins building a military alliance uh, with Iran. I think that's already starting to happen, but I think we're going to see more headlines along, uh, along that track. The two things that they have in common is, one, they hate God. Now, I know they talk a lot about Allah, but that's not the God of the Bible, the real God that exists. And so they have that because Russia is an atheistical country, at least the government is. And they also hate the Jews. They, they have an, an unnatural hatred for the Jews. Just like the Old Testament said they would in the last days. Another uh, series of headlines we should be watching for are more examples of Muslims coming to faith in Christ uh, in record numbers. Uh, that is not a story being reported much in the West yet, but it will be in the months and years ahead. It's happening in pockets of Muslim groups, but in Iran, it's a whole country. So it's happening here and there, you know, Algeria and other people groups in different countries, but in Iran, it's a major movement. When I went to the Middle East recently and I met with pastors from five Arab nations, Islamic countries, these are pastors who live, they serve, they work among Muslim communities and are persecuted in large part by them. I was absolutely stunned when I heard person after person tell me of a revival-like situation happening where they're at, where Muslims are coming to faith in Jesus Christ like never before. More Muslims are coming to faith in Jesus Christ today than any other time in human history. It's really an extraordinary story. I think a revolution is occurring with, throughout the Muslim world. In Iran, for example, there were only 500 known Muslim believe, uh, former Muslims who believed in Jesus in 1979 when the Ayatollah Khomeini took over in the Islamic Revolution. Only 500 in all of Iran. Today, the Iranian pastors that I've interviewed say there are well over a million uh, believers in the country now and they're just coming to Christ in droves. Our television broadcast has had so much effect that has uh, made the government alarmed. So it's under TV broadcast and the legislature, uh, they have brought it up that this Christian television, we have to do something about it. And uh, they have done. They have made uh, owning a satellite dish illegal. And uh, yeah, it, it is illegal to own a satellite dish in Iran. So, but they, ca they cannot. They cannot stop it. What God has started, they cannot stop it. There's a lot of people in Iran that want to convert to Christianity, but uh, they're afraid. They're afraid that their friends or families or somebody they know that they're, what they're trying to do is going to tell on them to the government. I just want everyone to, to know that there is hope and that emptiness can just go away. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. And it only, you can only find it through Christ. Just, just like I found it through Christ and how my life just changed so much. I am hearing that other people, Iranians especially, are getting visions about Jesus. So yeah, please pray for, um, for um, Iranians. Please pray that uh, Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, would come to know Christ. There is a possibility of persecution by family, but mostly government. But now the number of Christians inside Iran is so many that the government has stopped, for the most part, persecuting individual Christians, saying, you're a Christian, you go to jail, you're going to be killed. That has happened, uh, but it's rare. For the most part, what the government does to a, to a Muslim convert to Christianity, you say, well, keep it to yourself. The Jews are going to rebuild uh, the temple here in Jerusalem, and already we're seeing preparations uh, in the headlines. We see groups, Jewish groups beginning to prepare already to rebuild the temple. For years now, there's been a movement uh, associated with what's called the Temple Institute uh, to build the laver, the menorah, other uh, table of showbread, other kinds of furniture and furnishings associated with the temple. Now the temple itself was only 2,700 square feet. To replicate that building today would roughly cost 11 million dollars. So we're talking about four thousand dollars a square foot. Why? Because Solomon believed this was the very spot that God dwelt and was to be worshipped. So there has been a movement to sort of end the wings 
have uh, the right implements, the right furniture, the right, uh, the required uh, uh, ceremonial kinds of trappings ready to go for the new temple at the time that it's built. And that has been underway for several years. I think the most dramatic headline that, that we're likely to see in our lifetime is that when this Russian-Iranian alliance comes to destroy Israel, that God supernaturally intervenes to protect Israel. You'll have all this hopelessness seen in the homes by TV of the uh, Israelis, and then all of a sudden God gives them victory. Not through might nor by power, but by His Spirit, He will give them a victory. With pestilence and with blood, I will enter into judgment with him, and I will rain on him and on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, a torrential rain with hailstones, fire, and brimstone. I will magnify myself, sanctify myself, and make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they will know that I am the Lord. That will be the most exciting event in the history of the world when Almighty God shows He's really in charge. He's going to bear His arm and prove to all the atheists and the skeptics that deny His existence that He really exists. You will not find the EU. You will not find the UN. You will not find the US. But the scriptures say that God is going to supernaturally intervene with fire from heaven and earthquakes and uh, pandemics, uh, the likes of which the world has never seen before. And it could happen in our lifetime. Meanwhile, inside the epicenter, the pressure is building and the clock is ticking. The tremors from the Middle East are being felt around the world. Anxieties are rising. And so are the questions. What if the Bible is true? What if recent events in Russia and Iran were foretold centuries ago? What if the ancient prophecies about Israel and her neighbors actually do come to pass? And sooner than anyone might imagine.